Hey guys, welcome to the awakening. I thought I'd do something a little bit different today, a little bit calming, a little bit relaxing, just to help us all calm down a little bit, just to help us relax a little bit. Just to take a deep breath and ground ourselves a little bit. I don't know if you can hear the music in the background, but I hope you can because today I just want to calm everything down a bit. Just want us to let go of everything. This awakening is about experiencing the dark. And God knows we're doing that all over the place, all of us. Light workers, people that still are not in that particular vibration to understand what may be going on. People that are in the middle, that their heart chakra is just starting to open up after years and years of being told that they're not allowed to have an open heart chakra. Years and years of being numb and pushed down and not being able to be themselves. We're all in this together. The darkness is showing us fighting. People calling each other names, attacking people, each, each other on social media. Isn't that, sorry, isn't that what they want? They want us divided. They want us hurting each other. They want us attacking each other. They want us to be unhappy. They want us to be depressed. They want us to be scared. And yes, it's only a natural thing at the moment that the fear is coming up everywhere. We're being put into situations where we really don't know what's going on. We've been put into situations where it's difficult to see the light. We've been put in situations where we feel like some of us are going to be forced to do things we don't want to do. We've been put in situations where our fellow man, our friends, or could be becoming our enemies. Nothing to do with your religion this time. This time is to do with your beliefs, your culture, your methods of staying well. This time, they've created a situation to make us hate each other because a lot of people feel that those of us that cannot buy into this are either mad or in some way dangerous to their survival. Can we just take a breath from it all for a few minutes? I went to bed in fear, finding out things, more and more things like the mole children. I didn't know about that, but now I do. Do you? 
children that are forced to live in the darkness under tunnels, no light, and God knows what happens to them. The mole children. We call the mole children for a reason. Can we just take a breath, guys? We've been bombarded by pain and suffering years and years and years and years of research and we've been finding out more and more that our world is not congruent with what we believe with how we were brought up our, our, the world is something else the world is something else there's sinister, a lot of sinister stuff and we're learning it. And those of you who have learned it, we are doing our best to, to stay in our truth, to try and teach a lot of people who are in huge fear. People that don't want to listen. People that may not be able to listen. You're rattling the reality. Remember, it took us years and years and years to learn some of this stuff. And now we're trying to teach it. We're trying to teach it to people in one day, in one week, in one month. They need time to digest it all. This is a real test for us indigos and crystals, either awake for those who are waking, us aliens that come from other planets to do good, to love, to protect, to give love, first to ourselves. And we have learned how to do that. We are able to do that because we learned how to heal ourselves. We learned, we've come to a point where we know so much and we feel threatened now we feel threatened that something is coming and it's going to take away everything that we worked for years and years and years of work years and years and years of finding out of discovering what if it isn't going to be able to hurt us, to take away all of that? That's something I want you to think about. Deep down inside, I believe that we need to collectively send out a message that we know everything's going to be okay that us light workers will still get to eat what we want, to put whatever we want or whatever we don't want into this body, into the shell that we need to have in order to live on this planet, in order to do what we are here to do, to love and to give, and to educate and to heal. Now, one of the things I learned is that if you're seeing a lot of fear around you, it's in you. You cannot see what isn't in you. So that's your work. That's your work. That's your work. But then if you see, I'm going to give you some good news. There's a, a huge thing now that has happened, and it's so positive. It's going to protect the innocent children, something that they were going to do regularly to allow children to choose what gender they want to become, which is abuse, which is not right. A child could say, I want to be a cat. <laughs> I want to be a boy, a girl. 
we all went through that in our childhood. You cannot impose a decision like that on a child. That's the darkness that was here up until now. And now the message is clear. Something that loves us and loves our children and is trying to get through to us and tell us it's going to be okay has removed that. They are not going to be able to transgender little children anymore. In this country, it's against the law. Not until they are 18 years old, adults, 18 years old, to make a good conscious decision whether this is right for them or not. Up until then, it's up to us to protect our children. And somehow, this has come now in the lockdown. Do you see? Do you see how positive that is? Everyone must agree, regardless of whether you believe in what I'm saying to you, regardless if you believe in not wanting a needle in your arm, regardless if you don't believe in what I say, we all love our children, don't we? And we, surely this is a collective thing that you would not want a little child to be put under that kind of pressure. This is wonderful news because the Samaritans have been inundated by kids that have tra transgendered themselves and wanted to go back again. When they realize it's not a piece of cake, it's not about this flesh and blood, guys. You know that. If you don't, I had a serious eating disorder. All I wanted was to be slim all the time. I wanted to be slim. Like I said, like I grew up and that, to go to the beach, you had to be thin, you had to be beautiful. I wore glasses and braces and my body was not thin. It destroyed my teens. I developed an eating disorder. But let me tell you something. I could not heal that eating disorder until I went inside. Let me take this mask off now. I wore these since I was a child. You couldn't see my eyes. Why? Instead of teaching me how to heal these eyes, how to show the beauty of the eyes, the eyes are the mirror of the soul. They put these on me. And hid the beauty. It became such a, such a dependency that I can't sometimes take them off. There are days when I go around without them and I see perfectly well. <laughs> and then, boom, I put them back on again. <laughs> dependency, attachment. That's how I was brought up. But the only way to heal my eyes or this body eating disorder, or any kind of wanting to have a different type of body, wanting to look different, yeah, for fun. But I don't take it seriously. It's not my life. I don't take it seriously to the point that if I couldn't, if God forbid all my hair fell out, if I loved myself, wouldn't that be enough? And I do love myself because I know I love myself because of what I eat and because I don't have an eating disorder. And yet I had one the whole of my teens until I started to love myself. That you cannot cut up bits, cut off bits of your body to become what you want to become because it's not on the outside. It's on the inside. If you're not happy, you can't change your 
body to make you happy. You have to change your life, your values. You have to find out where you got unhappy. Does that make sense? So this rule now, this law that has come out, that is stopping abuse of children, as far as I'm concerned, is enormous. And it's in America, and it's in the UK, and that is enormous, guys. Can you not see the light? <laughs> I'm so happy about that. That has given me so much hope. And as you know, moving on TV is the hope and the glory. We give you the hope first, the hope. And this is a wonderful message of hope. So coming back to the light coming out of the darkness, can we not just unite and respect each other now? respect each other's views and not impose them on each other? I mean, I never force you to be a Jew, a Christian, a Buddhist, or I don't force you to be gay, or I don't tell you what to do, to be heterosexual or gay or bi. As long as you're not hurting innocence and you're not hurting me, can we not just try to come together as a human race and say, okay, this is what I want, but I'm not going to hurt my fellow man. Why is that such a big ask? That's all I'm asking, is that we unite and we don't fight. So take a deep breath again. And let's choose a how to stay sane in a crazy world card. These cards are full of wisdom, full of love, full of common sense. You can get them from me, how to stay sane in a crazy world card, or you can get them from the positivity shop in Nashton Lane. I think they have an online shop now. Let's shuffle them. Let's close our eyes and let's choose a card. I'm asking something, the uniqueness that we are. I'm asking this God love that we are. Love, God speaks through me all through the day. Is of course in miracles today. In quiet, I receive love's word today. Now that's not the one for today. There is no love, but love, God's love, which to me is the collective, all of us working together, the human race coming together, understanding each other, caring about each other. Let's see what the card says. I told you these cards were magic. Validation. Just validating each other, validating each other's beliefs and values, but giving each other the respect to understand that we all have a right to be what we are, to do what we want to do, to say what we want to say. It's a free world. As long as we don't go out there and harm an innocent. The people think that by not wanting a needle, I'm going to harm their lives. But how is that possible if they get the needle and I don't? Why can't I just live in peace? Let me live in peace. Let all my light workers, let us all live in peace and do whatever we want because we're not harming you. We have a different way of living. So why? And it works. Our way of living works. And we can teach you if you want. But if you don't want to learn, why abuse us? We're validating you. I'm validating each and every member of the human race. Do whatever you feel is right. 
But you have to validate me too. You have to validate my feelings and my emotions and not impose anything on me or, or the people like me. You have to understand that. You have to validate us. Like you validate another religion until you're forced to believe that they want to harm you and then you go out and kill them in the name of God. Are you going to do the same to me? Are you going to do the same to my millions of light workers? Are you going to come out and kill us all because you don't agree with us? Isn't that what they want? That part that does not love us? Please try to understand that. Today I will make sure that I feel validated. In therapy, where I got well, we had a little bell. Sometimes I rang the bell all day in order to get the love and attention I needed. My bell is my way of acknowledging myself and my need for support. You can now use a metaphorical bell to ask for help if you need it. Perhaps we feel we didn't get the love and validation we needed from our parents. Validation gives us our self-esteem and helps us to believe we are amazing human beings who can be ourselves. But now is our time to grow and to believe that we deserve it. We have a right to be angry, tired, scared, and frustrated. Don't forget, it's okay to have feelings. Use this card to say, hey, I'm here. Please listen to me and validate my feelings. I matter. Ring your bell today, my friend. Today is your day to be yourself. I am validated and loved today by all. And there's a little bell. The bell of validation. I am validated and loved today by all. So, to my fellow light workers, my brothers and sisters, indigos, crystals, dusties, wherever you come from, I love you. And please validate, keep validating what you want. Keep validating what the truth is. Keep saying, I am free. I am light. Keep pushing that message out there and looking for solutions, solutions, solutions to stay well, not to buy into the other stuff. But you need to take action and get out there and do the solutions. You sit there and you meditate all day, that's not gonna solve it. There's another side to this. Yes, meditate. Yes, come back to balance. But then go onto a Zoom, an action Zoom, and try to learn and teach. Pull on the resources that you are, the wisdom that you are. Brainstorm everything you need to brainstorm in order to understand where you stand and how you are going to protect yourself, if need be. I won't go into it too much today because I believe it's not going to happen. Especially when I showed you that amazing light message. You can find it all over Google about the children. So we'll end with a little bit more meditation. I just want you to breathe. Breathe in. And let go. Breathe in. 
and let go. I love you. You can contact me. I'm moving on TV one at gmail.com. You can ring me on 0743753 Let's unite with love. Let's sit down together and look at one side and the other side. Let's look at both sides. Let's come to compromises. Let's find compromises. Let's find the bit in the middle where everyone feels safe and happy. My feelings to light workers, my brothers and sisters, my indigos, my crystals, whoever you are, light workers in different spheres and planets and dimensions, we're all here. Just get out a piece of paper and brainwash. It's not brainwash, brainstorm. <laughs> what is the bit in the middle? How can I work with my fellow man? Contact all your friends and relations. Ask them for a compromise. Ask them for the bit in the middle. That's how you prevent war. Contact all your friends and relations. Ask them if they understand what a mandatory, compulsory needle is. Explain to them that you don't want it. Explain to them why. Find a compromise. If we can find the bit in the middle, if we can find a way to compromise, then no one can fight. You can't have a war. No more wars, no more bloodshed, peace. Peace on our planet. I think the reason they're doing this is to put us together and lock it, to frighten us and to create a war because people are worrying about their survival. So our job is to say, no, I'm not going to war with you. Okay, then, instead of calling me a terrible name, what do you suggest we do so everyone is happy? To me, it means you have a choice. You take the word compulsory out of it altogether. Can we do that? Can we join the human race together? I don't tell you what to eat. I don't tell you what to drink. I don't tell you what to smoke. I don't tell you what to put in your body and you don't tell me that's peace compromise i love you guys please share this everywhere like and subscribe i hope it helped you today you have a right to be validated every single day of your life to say you know what this is what I feel. This is what I believe. This is what I agree. You don't have to agree with anything anyone says. You have a right to say no. You have a right to say yes. Go inside and find the answers. I'm sending you all the love in the world. Namaste. Peace. Shalom. Salam. Shanti.